I heard from not Paul who's not coming. Yeah, Paul is awesome. uh, Anne said she'd be here. And why don't we start with introductions because we have new people. Um, and we'll start with uh, Paula Perry. I've been on FinCom now. So you and I are the same, right? Come on. And Brent, you, can, you can introduce them, <laughs> because they might not even know all that. I'm Brendan Sweeney. I'm Bob's administrative assistant. Uh, Eric Burkhardt, uh, two years, and third year. Sean Brandt, uh, 90 seconds or so. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Dewar, I'm uh, also my first year. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm Ann Landry. I've, I'm in, or I've done four years. I'm, I'm in, into my fifth year as a FinCon member. Um, Karen Herrick, I did two years about prior, so, um, but I'm new again. Never been chair. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of opportunities. Karen Angstrom, I'm the town accountant. And Bob Lerlacher, town manager, also eight years on FinCom once upon a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Long time ago. Um, if people wouldn't mind just checking and getting back to your leisure with the information on page two, Sean's already made a correction. No need to do it now, but if you just want to send uh, Brendan or I an email to correct anything, we'll get that updated. You just in terms of your address. I'm the only one on there without a phone number. That, we're trying to keep it that way. It worked out well, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I can give you my call. Okay. Call here says 20. I think she oh. might get an extra year. Oh, if she got oh. it like mid year or Who something. Who would I have this discussion with? I Me, thinking. I think. We'd oh. have to go back and check Laura's records. But oh, okay. Ever since that... 
change I'm not the sure bylaw. if it's a bylaw or the charter that changed. I think it might be the charter that allowed the fraction of a year not to be held against you. But why would we have the same start, Mark and I? Because it could have been uh, beginning of the year and middle of the year. So if we started oh. at the beginning of the year and you started in February. Oh, yay! I, I might get an extra I, I think they were at the same time, but one of us was filling a slot that had a shorter term versus a longer term. We'll find out. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I, this is just what was passed out last okay. year, and I don't remember how I did it a year ago. Oh, well, that's fine. Laura will figure it out, though. No one's turned out in a while. But you guys are close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone can follow up with any changes, please do so. I know when we were talking about this, like we knew we had three people, so the replacements were for Peter. Yeah. Um, Vanessa um, and David. Oh, of course. That's, it was, I sort of forgot about it. Yeah, that seat was empty for a little while. Yeah. Okay. And the max is nine years? Yeah, consecutive. You can then stop for a day and start up again. Probably. Okay. <laughs> you can figure out how to do that. <laughs> yeah. All sorts of opportunities. <laughs> and I wonder, should we go through liaison assignments? Um, sure. I just wrote down at the top what sort of typical suggestions are. Maybe there's a better way to organize all this, but having it on one page is always good. So um, just for I, background. I bolded what, what needs help if no one else wants to change. Oh, good. Does that help? We can just sort of focus on those. So we usually assign individuals to be a liaison to different groups. So it's good to go to their meetings or sometimes if it's not going to their meetings, they might just have, want to have someone to, you know, give some concerns to, so then that person can bring that stuff to the FinCon meeting and be their representative in a way. So um, we like to do the assignments, and you'll see some of the boards, like school committee and selectmen, take multiple people, you know, for good reason. Um, so. If we start... And also, do you want to reorganize? Do you want to do that oh. first? It doesn't matter. But typically, the chair does certain things, not to say you have to. The chair oh, is I off gotcha. in the school committee. Okay. And um, select board. Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, so it's, everyone knows Peter has left, so it put me in as chair. It's, so let's go through and think about how we want to organize for the year coming up. Um, and at this point in the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they at skipped least two other names reason. could have been nominated yeah. for chair. Yeah. Chair yeah. and vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> and Anne, I assume you're not in a position where you want to pursue something like that. It's probably not right now. Cool. Yes. I think that's probably wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully there'll be bigger and better things for you to work with. Yeah. Well, I would like to nominate Eric as chair. I'll second that. And Eric, you'd be willing to accept the nomination. <laughs> <laughs> um, seeing as we have two vacant seats here from the other people I was going to nominate. <laughs> or at least talk to them. Yeah. Um, yes, I would. Thank you very much. Great. Any other nominations from the floor? Is that not something you, you're interested in, Barlow? Uh, no, not ideally. All those in favor? <laughs> you have to vote for yourself. So, one, two, three, four, five. Correct, seven, zero, zero. Vice chair, and you can stop there or add a secretary. It's up to you. Did you want to nominate a vice chair? He was on, uh, yeah, I'd like to nominate Mark Doxer as vice chair. Second. That sounded like do you accept the any other? Do you accept the nomination? I would accept the nomination. If that's All those in favor? Oh, I probably should have asked for you. It was painful. What'd you say? That was painless. 
<laughs> we just had no. Yeah, this was like easier 45 than, minutes oh, last year. Oh, 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 easier than last year. I thought that was a little hot potato last year. Like, oh, yeah. good, thanks. <laughs> was the sound of silence. Well, so should we switch seats? Yeah. Should we switch seats? Everybody had medical now? issues and work was getting really busy. And, yeah. you know, there's all kinds of... Yes. Thank goodness for Peter. That's so we can switch seats now. <laughs> you, look, you look good in that seat. Let the record show she sat in the chair for 10 minutes. <laughs> Enjoyed every moment. <laughs> Starting slowly. <clears throat> appreciate the uh, voting conference from my colleagues. Uh, we appreciate maybe it. More. Maybe it was more a vote of relief. <laughs> it wasn't you? So where were we then? The Arizona assignments. Bob, why are some underlined? Um, those are departments uh, in terms of on the list. Oh, I, did, I didn't right. underline them on the top section, but there's boards or there's departments. Boards versus departments. And the departments generally are very light, if any, uh, activity at all, but it's always good to have some. Yep. And library and schools kind of overlap departments and also elected boards. So it looks like we didn't have anybody covering RMLD. Or they left. Uh, mm -hmm. It was probably oh, Peter. Yes. Mm. Peter, he's on RMLD. There you go. Yep. Yeah, RMLD is left in a Yeah, I put that, yeah, you used it, but I put that on the next page, the old yeah, one. Yeah, the old one. It doesn't look like it was only helpful. Peter, mm -hmm. which is a little surprising. Usually oh. I think of two, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is two. Now, last year, effectively, almost everyone was a liaison to both the schools and the select board because of the way we handled budget hearings. So are we think, envisioning something similar this year or not necessarily? I would say not necessarily, yeah. but it was helpful. So then when they presented the budget to us, it was very brief, but it was really because that being an override year, mm -hmm. trying to move everything forward. Are you envisioning an accelerated timeline again for budgets or not so? I put in a draft schedule where the town is going to go in December, even a week earlier than last year. So first and second, I think, weeks of December. And Sharon and I had breakfast with Gail and John, and they're going to do a January schedule. So I've also put a couple of their tentative okay. meeting dates in there. Um, if the select board goes along with that schedule, and so far they haven't complained, I would expect we probably wouldn't go into as much detail as last year for every department, but one of the things that you and um, others have asked for is a more comprehensive benefits, employee benefits discussion. So that could either happen at one of your meetings or as part of the budget process. It doesn't really matter. So we've got four nights in front of the select board. I'm not sure we're going to need all four. We used them last year. Yeah, and I don't know if you could dig out what was, because that was quite a few years ago. At RMLD, I remember. We were over at the Light Department oh, at the FinCom one? meeting. Yeah. And I think it was Carol Roberts, I think. Oh, that sounds right. Yeah. So I just yeah. thought, in terms of the general flow, I thought it was really effective. I, I loved I, that night. I agree. Wow. It's, it was really helpful, and it's, and it's overdue. I just ask that it not happen too soon, because HR is very busy right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> but sometime in the late fall, or December, or you know January, or whatever is fine. But I think it would be helpful. Right, because it definitely definitely allowed you to wrap your mind around the future life. Yeah. Stuff you yeah. Yeah, that takes some some thinking and some planning on HR and Sharon's part, and maybe partly my part. Um, the angle from you and the budget is not the comprehensive angle of the subject. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for instance, in my paycheck, I have a certain amount of withholdings for pension. You know, you don't care about that. Right. But for the broad topic, it's helpful for people to know how the actual pension obligations are funded, not mm -hmm. just through the general fund, but mm -hmm. at all sources. Mm -hmm. And um, Sharon yeah. will do the best job of that. And then I think schools only have three meetings in January. I'm, I'm not sure if. They expect to have more, whether that's just right. It's a little less than prior years. We're all kind of hoping it's an easier budget year. Yeah, you know, one doesn't know, but I'm certainly happier. It, it should be easier. 
So when FinCom wants to meet again, um, it's not as urgent. It's up to you. Last last year you met two weeks, two nights a week for two weeks, I believe. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want as long as you're done sometime by the middle ish of March, middle slash maybe third week of March. <clears throat> And the only other thing I'd like to get on the agenda is do we have to do leading up to fall town meeting is talk about um, whether we put some of our free cash in the stabilization. Okay. Because we held up for good reason. It's to not How would that work? Would that be a separate article? I guess it would be. Mm -hmm. I'll make a note of that because um, selectmen are going to close the warrant in September, so. You could do it in November, you could do it in April, it wouldn't really much matter. I just have to have it certified in time for November. Yeah, you, 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 you won't have it certified I mean, in September. Of course, I'll discuss whether that's something yeah. we have to do. Okay. Yeah, so maybe it's worth two seconds just to describe what. I think, uh, yeah, you probably should. <laughs> okay, so I just had the thought. So right now we have what we call free cash, and town meeting can use the majority vote to use the money. In free cash. We have been, so it's just sort of like a savings account, it's meant to be there as a push for a rainy day. Uh, lenders would look at it, we have this tremendous bond rating, and that would be a big piece of it. They want to, they want to make sure um, you have a comfortable amount of money in cash. So our guideline, which we just talked last year, had been 5%, now we're saying 7%, even though. Lenders won't give you an exact dollar figure. We're getting the impression that they want to see more than five percent. So and it's also because it's called free cash. To me, it gives the public the impression that it's this free cash and we should be spending it. Um, so it, if we put a certain amount of it in a stabilization fund. It just seems like a, a more secure, longer term kind of rainy day fund. And it takes two thirds majority for town meeting to vote to get money out of that. So it still doesn't change how you get money out, it just takes more of a vote from town meeting. I just like the idea of putting a certain percentage um, that is sort of that really, really sacred that you can but you never really want to touch and do a stabilization fund. I just think it gives better perception to the public of what that important it is to have it now. No more. A harder account to get money. When we did um, a peer economic development project over a year ago, I was surprised that almost all of our peers had much more in stabilization funds. We have a million or so, I think a million. A million and a half, yeah. Um, we were very low compared to others. Now our free cash is healthier, so it's kind of one pocket pants, pants pocket of the other, but um, some of them even have multiple stabilization funds, like a capital one is very popular, a general one is somewhat popular. If we um, did the stabilization fund, um, looking at our, our policy on the 7% um, and saying that, that any stabilization funds would be excluded from the 7%, is that, is that would we, would we re-revise re our free cash policy or would we, would, we, would be, we would make sure that our policy is 7% in free cash plus an additional amount in a stabilization fund. I, I thought seven percent yeah. was total yeah. reserves. I think it's right. Stabilization. Oh, so, yeah. It's Other reserves, including committed stabilization funds, are excluded from the seven percent minimum requirement. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's committed stabilization fund, but the general oh, stabilization okay, yeah. fund is uncommitted. Okay. Yeah, we have stabilization Good funds eyes. that are for yeah. specific yeah. purposes. Yeah. But I think we got to be. Committed. We need to be careful too, because we now we're creating a third. There are three categories of things people need to be thinking about now. So there's free cash, there's uncommitted stabilization, there's committed stabilization. Yeah. But well, what's committed? Do we have committed? We don't have. We don't have. Well, you, um, you created sometimes, like for MSBA, you used to create them. Yeah. The MSBA would. And then there was a, a bond repayment. MSBA would. There was pay a us. reserve fund, but it was never it a stabilization. A no. Not a committed stabilization no, fund no. that we don't have. Yeah. We, we jumped from liaisons. Pretty substantial. We did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we need to set aside time to talk about this more fully. Well, if, if you're aiming at November town meeting, then yes. I, honestly, I don't think it much matters. 
in terms of when you do it. Um, you because we, we would need language. Not that the language is hard. We need language for September, August twenty first. I'm previewing the warrant with the select board, so that's this isn't on it. There is other. So if we want to do it by November town meeting, we, we need really to talk it because we, we don't meet talk again it through tonight. Yeah, we don't meet again until September. That's why I say there's really, honestly, there's no hurry. It's not urgent. I, I do understand it's an optics issue. Um, How, I mean, my, my sense isn't that there have been many occasions where there's been a really contentious use of, of free cash at town meeting, at least recently. So I, maybe it doesn't feel terribly urgent if, the, if all we're really doing is moving the, the bar from 50 to, to two thirds. Um, so given how quick that yeah. timeline's coming up on us with you previewing, previewing the warrant later this month and that kind of thing, maybe it does make sense to hold it. Do you have an whatever you're comfortable with. It's, it's not a big deal to do it, but you really want to feel comfortable doing it and discussing it. Yeah, I just feel like we keep saying it was not that urgent we don't do it. Yeah. yeah. What if we finish up liaisons? <laughs> right. Good idea. And then Good we have a couple other things on the agenda, and then maybe we, we can yeah. talk about it further tonight. Yeah, it's on the list. <laughs> oh, it is on the list. So, so we have. Sorry, Mark, go ahead. No, I was just going to say one of the things um, the chair traditionally has served on the audit committee. Right. Is that something that, that you want to be taking on? Uh, Paul is a pretty good um, person to be there because. Very familiar with audit from, from a career point of view. Yeah, is he there? He's, he's, on, yeah. he's, he's there as of right now, but we typically we're, we're two. And I think you the chair is there. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, Paul. Peter. Peter, but it doesn't say no, it. No, it's Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul McNeese. Didn't it? Oh, it was just Paul. I, what, I was it just it was Paul? Two. I'm sorry. I, I'm it was Paul and David. I think it was David. Yeah, because again, David from a career point of view. Yeah. I don't remember seeing David, but he may have been. Well, from that perspective, I guess I'd ask. So I don't, from a career point of view, if, if there's anybody else on the, on the committee that does, that would want to do that with Paul. Well, my husband's on the committee. I can tell you they're quick. Yeah, is anyone's wondering? Because I know which ones aren't. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> These are quick meetings. Yeah, you're actually, it actually is two things. It's the town audit committee, and it's also um, RMLD. Yeah, it's more than one meeting, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's two meetings. Where do you usually meet? Like the point? You're saying the audit committee doesn't well, RMLD specific meetings? Meeting. Yes. Okay. Here, usually the and actually, I actually think you here. are. Oh, is that different than sure. that RMLD thing? It's usually I think it was kind of both. We call it audit, but oh. it was actually both. Hmm. And the representatives from this committee would be yeah. there for both of them. Right, I think you may actually be the ch chair. You're the chair of the audit committee. Mm -hmm. Who is? <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, that was a, that was a <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you might be the chair of the RMLDS. <laughs> Would you like to join me after? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Connected with this type of thing for a living, or, or okay. All right, I think so Paul's been on it for a while. I can join Paul then. Can I make Paul chair? If that's within my authority, certainly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, we have three already at the select board. I'm happy to. Um, shift my responsibilities too. I've, I've always had been assigned schools and select board. I'd be happy to take on library or public services or anything else. So if, if other folks are interested in those liaison positions. I've been attending select board anyway and probably will continue to do so regardless. So I'm happy to mm -hmm. put my name on that one. So Ann no longer with select board and Sean. We'll assume Mark with a C is okay to continue, I guess. Mark with a K. Um, 
can do that or conceivably RMLD. Mm -hmm. Maybe see where the, the need is. And I can go the way. Okay. Any, in, in the vein of what Ann was saying, anybody else currently assigned that wants to change anything? I might give up one of the three already with me if I want to do a lot of things. Seems fair. Yeah, I would suggest you stay with PPC just because they're going to be talking about some long term okay. issues. Maybe not this year, but eventually. Maybe I'll give up facilities and public safety if anybody's interested. I'd love to um, try um, public safety if you can right. give it up anyway. I was going to ask is there still a library building committee? Is that something? Nope, gone. Gone. Good, that makes it easier. Don't, doesn't look like we have anybody uh, with facilities. No, no, no one else. Oh, wait, what did you just take care I said I'd be happy public to do safety. on public safety. Oh, I'll do facilities. Then. All right. So we have three select board, right? Yep, three school committees. We have three schools. So we need another RMLD. Sorry, Mark is RMLD. Again, sorry, that's distinct from the audit RMLD. Okay. Correct. <laughs> nice try. It's it's working at it. Working at it. Yeah. We have um, library trustees. I'm just working through the list at the top now. Is that nobody? So, yeah, nobody. do you still need someone else for RMLD, or did you say you want Should to? Have Should I'm happy to do either RMLD or library. I can do our Go ahead, do the library. Okay. <laughs> so, Anne, you take library? Mm hmm So we've got two RMLD. Yeah. The numbers at the top, Bob, are kind of ideal? Just a suggestion, yeah. yeah. Typical. Anybody else interested in library? I could do library. Was that Sean? Yep. Their meetings are pretty quick, too. <laughs> To contrast with select board. <laughs> yeah. And the school yeah, right and the bottom. And that's only right. Like, I found a lot Budgeting. Include budget. Yeah, so yeah, it's just yeah. Budget. Mm -hmm. it would, budgeting. It doesn't so. want four hours every other week. Come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, we've got two there. That's two. I don't know. Two MLD. We've got two PDC. I don't really know. I'll let you know. <laughs> we've got two on it. We need somebody for facilities. Yeah, you got. Uh, I took facilities. No, politics oh, facilities. DPW. That's under Mark. Mark. Yep. Public safety is Karen. Public services. Public services is the catch-all. It's um, anything from building inspectors to board of health. It's a pretty wide array. And then administrative services. Is town manager's office. Um, I don't know operations things core to the whole administration. How, how many meetings are those? I, I, I would say no meetings other than public services has a lot of boards, nighttime boards. Administrative services has very few. Uh, they're involved in cable negotiations, for instance, right now. But public services has almost a dozen boards. Usually, FinCom has very little to do with any of them, but you just never know. Administrative services need someone probably more than, I'm sorry, public services need someone more than the last two. What do you, finance, I just figured you ought to have one. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think really we're going to have to have one. You know how you get older. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would, um, if I'm on our and not select board, I'd be happy to do public and administrative services. Right. They, each of these groups know there's a process by which they can funnel issues through. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, and if they didn't have a liaison, it's not the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, ones with boards is probably a little more important, so they feel like they have an independent avenue to go to FinCom instead of through me or other yeah. employees. Yeah. Yeah. And it's some, some areas you've got yeah. interest in. Um, whoever you feel would be a good fit. I'm, with anything 
I got no preference, basically. So Dan was select board, right? I think you're. I don't short. think we have anybody for Dan. If he has another select board opening, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. And we'll marry her. And do we need one more person for the library? I think we have two. We do. Do we? Mm -hmm. Who are the two? Sean. I have Anne. Anne. Right, right. You're black balancing. Anne and Sean. <laughs> yeah. Short means So I think you need finance. Finance. What would, what would that liaison do? I'm confused. Good question. Okay. <laughs> I've never had to use it. I was, it was an issue that we needed something for family. Sharon wants to complain. Okay. okay, do you want to put my name down? Yeah, sure. If I don't have to go to a meeting. There really isn't any meetings regarding <laughs> finance. Sure. Right. Did, we, did we get admin services? Yeah. I think that's Mark's Mark. 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 Oh, Mark McCusser. I think someone else wants it up. Nothing that 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 so Mark said you do it. Oh, sorry. I thought I wrote down yeah. public services. I just have it backwards. Let me read what I have from the top and you tell me what I've got wrong. Uh, Paula, school, school committee, permanent building committee and facilities. Mm -hmm. Sean, uh, library and select board. Mm -hmm. Eric, uh, permanent building committee, audit committee. Mm -hmm. Dan, select board. Mark, RMLD, public services, administrative services. Karen, RMLD, public safety, finance. Anne, school, school committee and library. Paul and Mark are what they have listed there. No changes. Right. Does That's what that I sound am. right? Yeah. Okay. I, th I think you're set then. Great. Unless, Dan, yeah, you want to pick up another one. Okay. What, what, is there an opening? Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. It could be any one of them. It might not be a bad idea to have a third member on the permanent building committee. Mm -hmm. It's just because Killam is going to come up as a topic. Mm -hmm. An elementary school space. Dr. Kevin, you down? That's fine. Right. Thank you. And Bob, who sends out the emails for those when there's meetings and stuff? Well, I'll send out an email either tomorrow or next week with each of you and whoever you would normally need to contact department heads or committees. Um, and then, you know, normally Caitlin Saunders sends out things for the select board meetings, and she would just add you to her distribution list the three. Right, I guess that's what I mean for the permanent building committee. Joe Huggins. Um, What's that? Joe Huggins and facilities. And he, he sends out the agenda. Yeah, okay. yeah they, they just had a meeting at 5 30 or 6 tonight. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they, they meet generally once a month. That's the most fun committee there is, nothing personal. <laughs> they even have two members that aren't members, but they're still going because they haven't been re sworn in because the appointment committee can't. <laughs> That's how much they like it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so this takes us to. Uh, do we want to spend time on the, the 19 meeting schedule any further now, or should we? I think you should look at it. I just honestly, I just threw it together today as a as an outline. I think you can count the December and January school committee and select board meetings pretty much as as chopped in there. But the rest are all up to you. Um, John agreed, as did Paula, that one financial forum in the fall seemed sufficient. And um, the schools preferred October 10th. October 17th um, is another community meeting for economic development, so I prefer to stay away from that one. And later than October 17th is too close to the November town meeting to get whatever you do um, if you're voting on Warren articles into print. So October 10th or 3rd are the two most likely possibilities, assuming you want to stick to a Wednesday mm -hmm. or a financial forum. What do you think that you'll know or not know by October 3rd or 10th? In terms of free cash? You probably won't have it certified, which I is okay. I won't have it certified, but I have an idea what it is. Yeah. I may have it certified. It depends. We stand in line in DOR now because we have less people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when you're ready, they just, they, you're waiting. So. John and I have a rough idea of what um, what the budgets will look like next year. Rough, very rough. The area that we need more work internally is we need to work on the capital plan, which we've got planned. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are okay with October 10th, I know that's that's John Dory's preference, and I so we want to try to hold it in the library if that's possible. That's a really nice meeting room. Mm -hmm. 
So generally, post override, is this still going to be like a million, a million and a half from free cash or whatever it is? Or is it going to be a new world? Well, that's Ten million. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, know figure out there. That I, think, I think you pretty much arrived at the conclusion that a million was, a, well, I guess I'll say a default. Because mm -hmm. a million for regeneration is pretty obvious. Yeah. Right, because if it regenerates any, anyway, we're not really. I think we used 1.2 last year. That sounds right. Just to keep it level, so it didn't mm -hmm. dip down. But we won't know when we regenerate till about October time. Yeah. It's going to be a pretty good number from what I've seen. Yeah. Do everybody okay with October 10th? Mm -hmm. My anniversary thought. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. oh. That's not good. You can have a, a date there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's too bad. Let me just check. You don't have to meet on a Wednesday. We do a different day, right? Yeah. yeah. That's true. School committee has moved to Thursday. It's like board is Tuesday. Let me just check. I think the select board does not happy. meet October 9th. Uh -huh. I don't think so. <clears throat> Columbus Day, October 8th. Mm -hmm. uh, the selectmen are not scheduled to meet on the 9th, so you could meet Tuesday the 9th if that's better. Doesn't matter to me. I think we stay with the 10th. I'm not really hearing any well, conflicts. Is it, yeah. is, was that your anniversary? Oh, that's right. Do you want, oh, yeah. do you want we could have it the 9th. Yeah. No, don't okay. be silly. No, the 10th is great. You <laughs> see, it's not your first anniversary. <laughs> 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 it might be my last. <laughs> I'm indifferent between the two personally, so I don't know if others feel that way, but if you're not sure, then I mean, if you're not opposed, Wednesday is always the best choice because that's what people are expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. what we need. Okay. And then the rest you can always add or subtract meetings with really with a little bit of notice whenever you want. All right. Yeah, we're on for the twenty-sixth. Yeah, September was tough um, to try to get a Wednesday. There's a couple of Jewish holidays before then. So there's just no easy way to do it. And then I forget the first of September what the what's going on in the first week. Anything else on the schedule from anyone? When do you want to try to meet uh, to do the budgets? Um, I picked three weeks, but again, <clears throat> you can really do whatever you want. Um, the schools will give a budget to me on the 31st, according to John this morning, January 31st. So I don't need a month to balance it and get it to you. Two weeks is probably fine. Um, the reason I picked the 27th is the week before school vacation, and that's usually a lousy week to try to meet for attendance. So that would be Wednesday the 20th. I wouldn't suggest you meet, but the 27th is fine. And again, if, if FinCom attends the other December and January meetings and or watches uh, on YouTube, mm -hmm. I really think one meeting for the town and one for the schools is all you need. I think last year went really well. Mm -hmm. So we could leave it as is and move, move to one. Oh wait, so you've got two right now, one for town, one for schools. Yeah, I've yeah, got yeah, two, and then I've got a third one just for you to wrap it up and vote mm -hmm. everything, including which was articles. basically what we did last year. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't remember if you did three or four meetings. I think we planned for four, but I'm not sure you needed to four. Because you did two and a two, oh, two weeks back to back. I'm just not sure if you needed the four. Yeah, there was one fourth one that we canceled. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now into the policies. Starting with OPEP. Is that the page you have? 
have yet. Yeah. Take it away, Sharon. So we've presented this a few times, um, but I don't think we were willing to commit to any kind of policy. But this is essentially kind of how it's done currently, it seems, from my uh, perspective. We've been putting in about 500000 for the general fund, or 550 um, each year. And it says not less than 5% of the established, oh, I'm sorry, not less than 5% of the estimated premium costs for employees and retirees covered by the general fund. And I think it's roughly that 500000 550000 And we've been doing that, but we've never actually had a policy saying that we would always do that mm -hmm. because nobody wanted to kind of, um, in tough budget times, kind of commit to this. At this point where the override is passed, maybe it's time to take another look at it and maybe decide whether or not um, it's time to put a policy in place of how we actually in the fund deal with that. What is our commitment? And that's what this and is. And then informally, haven't we also been taking benefits coming a lot different? Money to I'm sorry. Well, only once or twice, oh, not, okay. not recently. It was like some windfalls where we had a surplus in health insurance, but that, that's probably gone back four yeah. or five years. Oh, yeah, like five years ago, I think we put in about 800000 because we had a little bit of yeah. extra money in the health insurance line. But in general, that's kind of this kind of summarizes how we've been doing it, but we haven't actually adopted the policy, we've just been doing it. So it just take a step back. Probably worthwhile yeah. to OPEB yeah. is. Oh, other post employment benefits, so it's essentially health insurance for retirees. Right. And it's a growing liability, and so, and it's not mandated that we fund it, but we've been funding it to the best of our ability. Um, but the, it's always nice to have a policy in place that says that you have a plan on how you're going to get there. Um, and so this has been, this was drafted in 2012, but it is essentially what we've been doing because um, the retirement or the pension um, liability is to be fully funded by 2029. Um, and then I think the hope is that we can redirect some of that assessment money towards this enormous liability as well. Um, but because we're not able to fully fund the annual required contribution to fully fund OPEB in a 30-year period for the general fund anyway, the enterprise funds do fully fund. And so they'll be fully funded around the same time the pension is, hopefully, hopefully you know, both as well. Um, but the general fund, I think we'd have to put at least $2 million more in there to get it fully funded in 30 years. And we just don't have $2 million laying around. $2 million more. per year. Yeah, more. Right. Yeah. So is $2 million the total per year, roughly, or $2 million more than we're doing? I thought it was somewhere around 2 to $2.5 million. Okay. And maybe my memory's not serving me correctly. Maybe it is just $2 million I think it's total. closer to 2 but that was going back 2 3 years, so it could certainly be more. It could, yeah. I mean, it's definitely around two. So maybe it's another one point five million because we're putting in five hundred thousand. Yeah. Um, yeah, that probably is right. Um, but the enterprise funds do fully fund their annual required contribution. So every time we do evaluation, they reset to another thirty years because we're never able to fund the yearly required amount to get there. <laughs> so they just do an open schedule and they do another thirty years. So hopefully, the hope is is that when we fully fund the pension, that we can redirect some of that assessment money here. Right, how much are we putting for pensions? Like, oh, where's that thing I just gave you? Yeah. <laughs> Almost four million. Yeah, four million. Almost four million, just under. Seven. And that drops by over a million after FY29. Mm -hmm. About a million, million and a half. So they were just shift some of that money. Over. Yeah. We are ahead of a lot of our peers. I mean, it's something that was documented at the audit committee meeting that we are making a conscious effort to fund, even though it's not mandated to fund. Some are more aggressively going at their their uh, funding of their pension so that they can get there quicker and then start. You know, but we actually have been doing something now with the hope of even um, being able to still get to 2029 and be doing something in the meantime. So. It's just one of those things, I think, that because of tight budget times, I think we weren't able to get into exactly. that. So, so if there's a time, this is the time. Yeah. yeah. And we've been doing the 500, right? We've been budgeting. Yeah. I think we increased it. it to 550. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and <clears throat> not to talk behind John's back, but he and I both agreed and always have agreed that you don't want to go spend all the money you have and forget long-term liability. So even now, we're even probably extra careful just because there's more money from the override. Now is the time to set aside some of that for other things before you spend it. Because once you spend it, it's a recurring cost mm -hmm. in either you know, one of our budgets. Mm -hmm. And both budgets are healthy enough that I don't, I don't think it's necessary at all. Um, 
in the first override, I was a strong advocate for putting some portion of the override into things like this, but we didn't do it this time on purpose. It was just too confusing. But for that sure. doesn't mean you can't do better. You know, when you go through in October or financial form, you can have a policy and then you may see that the numbers can support more mm -hmm. without really harming the operating budgets. doesn't mean you, you've got to agree or do it, but you can have the discussion. Yeah, because this is basically seeing not less than 5%, but you could, if any budget year, say, let's go a little bit And more, I think yeah. right now I'm pretty sure the override budget for health insurance was $12 million, so we're a little low on what we did, but you know, it's close. So... If this is pegged at five percent of premiums, it's going to grow based on the rate, the rate of growth in premiums, right? Mm -hmm. And then also sort of total headcount, that sort of thing, cover headcount. Um, ha does the delta between the, you said there's like a two million dollar delta essentially? Mm -hmm. Does that delta grow faster than that growth in premiums, given sort of you know how the no, retirees no. are aging out and that kind of thing? It's, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, in theory, if you were putting, let's just say, 20% yeah. in it every year, you'd be okay. You'd have a target date of FY30 or whatever. <laughs> to, to the extent you're doing less, yeah, it is doing one of these. You're pushing the fully funded data out further. So we're not, I mean, we're, this would by no means start closing the gap. It would just make the pain less. It's slowing the gap years. from growing if we did nothing. Mm -hmm. Slowing <laughs> the growth in the gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fair. Okay. And this is a Right, right. Yeah. And this is just a, a suggestion. You can make changes to what's here before you adopt it. If you think it's a lower percentage that you'd be more comfortable with, or what does set aside mean specifically? It says that the amount um, will be set aside. Because we, it, we, That's, we do it two phases, right? Yeah, because um, the money is put in a line item for it in, on July 1st, but it's not voted until April town meeting to be put into the trust. And that gives you, our town meeting, the cushion if we needed it for health insurance in a given year. It's, there's another Take five, 600,000 right there. Right, so, so net is that as we're doing the budgeting process, we're assuming that it's to be used for that and not available for other things. Correct, one of those two commit. things, correct. It, okay. it's, it's meant to go into the trust fund, but it's an emergency measure. Once it goes in the trust fund, you can't get it back. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But in theory, if, if incomes, I can't remember, did you do 7% or 7.5% for health insurance Absolutely. over the last couple of years? So if you got a 15%, you've got a source of funds without disrupting the budgets for the one year. And we've never had to use that, but I think its existence is sort of helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, otherwise you'd be using free cash, so. But it, ma it makes sense that it's set aside that way for a period of nine months as a cushion. Um, that way you can be less worried that you're funding OPEB because it's still there to be something else if you really needed it. Now, in, in theory, town meeting could vote it out of that and into any line item, put it into the school budget for the rest of the year if it wanted. So just, uh, I'm the, I mean, the number makes sense to me. I think it's probably, it starts to get painful in the overall budget if we, you know, get much more aggressive than that, I would say. Um, the, one, the one thought that I have is, is the, the sort of out at the beginning of the first, par or at the end of the first paragraph, circumstances may occur which requires us to raise or lower the minimum from time to time. Um, it, it's, a little, it's a little soft, right? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any thoughts about how we might sort of bulk up what that, you know what that hurdle would be to re to revise this. Yeah. Is are, are we thinking about adopting? If we adopt this as a policy, is it is it because we think that the bond rating agencies want to see some things rather th than the prac? They want to see something beyond just our prac. Given practice, they want to see a policy. I don't know if the bond rating agencies have been making changes. I I would say. Um, if they're not your audience, I'm not really sure who is. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they surprisingly like policies, as we've run into on mm -hmm. this and, and the how do you issue debt. Um, you so know, it's, it's more of a discipline if some portion of town meeting didn't like funding OPEB and you didn't have a policy, maybe they have an easier way to not fund OPEB. If 
nine independent people have created a policy, it's probably got a stronger arm. It's, it's, it's just discussion. It's never happened. And I'm, I'm just wondering if, if they're sort of the target audience and what kind of language do they like yeah. to see or mm -hmm. as to giving ourselves some flexibility yeah. but also having a strong policy. Right. Yeah, this re to me this reads more like guideline than policy, right? Mm -hmm. Which is policy. <laughs> right. So it's yeah. only That's a right. target anyway, yeah. because yeah. at the end of the day, town meeting is the only one that can yeah. make it happen. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's kind of what our suggestion is yep. to, to put forth. The, the other potential audience might be auditors. I was wondering. About yeah, that. and they haven't brought it up. In fact, mm -hmm. somewhat to the contrary, where they've mm -hmm. kind of said to us, "Yeah, you're nice well, that you they, put money away." Yeah. They probably will once it becomes more defined as what your actions have to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that happens. Which are what, a couple of years out still they're saying? Yeah. yeah. Do we need to have that acknowledgement statement considering we have the language, the preliminary OPEP contribution may be then adjusted higher or lower when final premium rates vary from the initial estimate, or is that not accounting for enough possible circumstances that would give us? the flexibility to raise. Maybe if you if it ends up coming out of the first paragraph, then that fourth paragraph isn't quite sufficient to make Because it's, mm. it's so specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's only premium. Right. Things that could change it. Right. And so in practice, when this adjustment happens, is it are we pegging it to a particular percentage and as the premium you know the premium total goes up or down the OPEP contribution goes up or down or are we saying that the percentage um, changes because the denominator changes we, we usually don't know the premiums until I think it's middle of February right around Valentine's Day um, and by then, last year it was too late. In a normal year, you haven't seen the budget or at least voted on the budget mm -hmm. yet. So in theory, it's never happened, but that would give us an opportunity to say, boy, premiums just went up a lot. The number we put in for OPEP is no longer 5%. We've got to boost it by X. That's why it's there. I don't really think it's, it's not rocket science here. <laughs> I think you could have a much more vague, if you will, uh, policy statement without the math. Or you could have something more precise that you really intend to adhere to. This kind of goes in both directions with the first and fourth paragraph. When we take it and, and, and spend it, though, we end up viewing it more as dollars anyway yeah. than yes. percent, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And we kind of targeted, <clears throat> kind of said, look, half a million dollars feels like a good contribution toward, what's the number, 30-something? What's the OPIB liability? Oh, 60-something. 60 60-something. 60 okay. So it, it's this... Right, exactly. big blob out there. <laughs> so we're trying to do Such something small, toward it. Yeah. And whatever you adopt, if you adopt a policy, is also guiding everyone in the future five and ten years from now that if you don't you know, revise this, you got to be doing at least this much. Because the, the pressure in the last few years has been, let's not do OPEP because we don't have any money. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what happened two overrides ago. Is there were no such policies, none on free cash, none on this, um, none on capital, so our capital spending went to almost mm -hmm. zero. Mm -hmm. And then we asked for an override after doing all those bad things. <laughs> this time mm -hmm. we asked earlier. You know, and that's, that's really the benefit of having, I think, policies like this. To guide, to guide Absolutely. Once it's in there, people don't even realize it. Right. You know, I mean, it's just how we do things. things, yeah. It's just how we do things. Do, so we, need, do we actually need the sentence further the FinCom recognizes that circumstances may occur which would require the FinCom to raise or lower this minimum from time to time, we can always revise the policy. Right, because right. it's a target. We'll it's a target. Yeah, and we, we don't need that sentence at all. We could, take out, we could yeah. just take it out because then we can revise the policy if we need to. Okay. Before we jump to that, I think all the other policies we've done actually have a recognition yeah. sentence. Yeah. So if you look at the debt and capital policy, third paragraph, income also recognizes from time to time additional capital yeah. expenses over this will be beneficial for the long-term health, which... Okay. You know, and then the next page, it. same thing on cash reserves. I feel like I see that language a lot. So it's yeah. Just, it's just a, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's not really objectionable. I just didn't know if anyone was... Yeah. 
and I think when we did the cash reserve policy, we, we kind of did two things, right? We said it could change, but if it gets below 5%, that requires a formal review mm -hmm. because that's, that really is not long-term good. You better really talk about it. Right, and we knew we were heading into perhaps another failed over. I'm thinking we might go against our policy here. So that, that's got some teeth on a minimum that language yeah. where this, this the, the, the OPEP piece doesn't necessarily. You know, do we want to go in that direction? Wait, say that again? So with the, with the cash reserves policy, yeah, it's a target, just the 7% is a target, just like the 5% is a target here for OPEP, but then we took the time to say, but if it goes oh, below yeah. 5%, then, yeah. then, you know, that triggers a little more formal book. Do we want to we want to go in that direction with OPAP. I don't think so. Okay. Just because I feel like we're taking a step forward even. It's creating policy. Now, you already probably said this. What are the premium costs now? I think the budget is $12 million, but that's because we added a lot in the override for new employees to be hired. Mm -hmm. So you won't spend $12 million this year for sure. Um, but I think that's the baseline. So we're going to year or two, the 5% could get it. Yeah. Could raise Um, we're not that far off, though. I think we're at 550 next year, and it, if it should be 600, that's not that big of a difference. Mm -hmm. I, and I, again, I think that 12 million is too high. I don't know it's too high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going um, What if that last sentence in the first paragraph, instead of saying raise or lower the minimum from time to time, obviously we can always revisit the policy, uh, make a contribution below the minimum, right? I, it, it's I mean, I don't think we're trying to give ourselves the out that we're going to say it's not 5% anymore, it's 3%. But in a given year, you might say we're only going to make a 3% contribution, mm -hmm. right? And that's closer, I think, to sort of the, the backstop that's in the, in the other policies. Mm -hmm. It allows for some deviation. Mm -hmm. So you're suggesting if it's a, in any given year, there may be reasons to adjust this? Something along those lines, yeah. So that it's clear, this is the policy that might yeah. be crazy reasons that we have to adjust it, but yep. it doesn't change our target. Yep. Mm -hmm. So circumstances may occur in any given year. And how would you finish um, that sentence, Sean? Um, which require? Which would require the FinCom to lower, and get rid of raise. Or, or FinCom to deviate from the target contribution or something along or those lines. Or just change this. Adjust. Sure. Change this minimum. Instead of raise or lower, just change. To recommend a lower contribution. Well, so so that when you when you talk about changing the minimum, it sounds to me like you're rewriting the policy. You're saying the policy is not five percent anymore. Now it's three percent or it's seven percent. I think what we're saying is the actual contribution amount we make in a given yeah, year as target could be you know more or less than five percent. Right. I see what you're saying. It yeah. sounds like we're evaluating our policy. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. The the policy is still five. Yeah. We so still make five percent as the minimum contribution, contribution, even if. In year X, we have to do three and a half percent for some reason, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Do we need to have, in, in, to Anne's point on kind of who's the message for in terms of what, what this policy is, do we need to say that if we had some amazing windfall one year, yeah, we absolutely. sold a property this, the, up outside of Oakland Road for $50 million suddenly? That there might be reason to adjust this in, in that given year, right? Because it said raise or lower, but I think instead of the minimum, adjust is probably fine. It should yeah. be the contribution sort of getting to right. it, not stating that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think that works. So what were you doing? Okay, can with? we read that back? What, what, what do we have now? Further, the FinCom recognizes that circumstances, circumstances may occur in any given year which would require the FinCom to change this minimum from time to time? Adjust the adjust, contribution. Yeah. Adjust, adjust the contribution. contribution. Adjust the contribution yeah. from time to time. So the policy is the policy, but the contribution may have changed. Yeah, that's better. Do we need from time to time? Do we need from time to time? Um, no. Well, February, March, April. <laughs> to, <laughs> to adjust the contribution <laughs> period. Below the Below the minimum. No, because that sounds case, like we're changing the policy. Just the contribution. Well, adjust the contribution below the minimum. Because 
adjust, we're going to adjust the contribution every year. I don't know if I'm worth oh. spending too much <laughs> to adjust the. But it's not just below, right? It's also above. It in, could be in, above. In you know, Mark's, Mark's example, right? You know, one year we want to take a ten million dollar bite out of it. Mm -hmm. Seems unlikely, but. But that's that's <laughs> not actually deviating from the policy of having a minimum. So you know, if we go above, if we go so above the minimum well, target, that's I mean, not like so deviating would it be from the policy. Expected contribution. Mm -hmm. Is the expected the contribution? Expected, there we go. That works. No, you you can't change an expected contribution. You change an actual contribution. So change the annual contribution, I would say, does it? I think that's I think that's pretty clear what it means. You're doing I'm glad it. to see we're looking to do this. You're doing it one time. Yeah, me too. Hmm? We'll see if anyone's paying attention. And probably not, but you know what? Feels better. <laughs> I'll sleep better. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Anything else? So let's look at the language in one, two, three, paragraph four. Yeah. In the second sentence. It's expected the estimate will be improved by mid February when final premium rates are released and then be adjusted. I think you could cross the next two sentences out. Good. Starting with we don't the is expected. We don't want to be changing up the budget that way, right? No, what's the difference? It's just, it's close now. So we're going to strike the two sentences beginning with the preliminary. Um, strike it with it is expected and ending with from the initial estimate, I think. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary to micro uh, micromanage that. This policy will help cushion the budget process. I think the last sentence is still yep. appropriate. Mm -hmm. and we need to concern ourselves at all with RMLD's OPEP and its policy, or, or at all. No, I'm not sure you can. Do they have any legal right? I don't know. I don't think so. They're I mean, fully funded. They are fully they, funded. Yeah, they're, they're on the same target as the so enterprise. Water, right. sewer, stormwater, and non are fully funding. So right. I guess that kind of. This is guidance that FinCom's giving. Well, I don't know. They, yeah, they're already following you, it. You have no legal say over what they do. Yeah. She does. And they're exceeding the They're hitting the mark. So. Yeah, they're doing a good job. It's the general fund that's the higher dollar amount. So. Right. The other policies are just there for reference. I think the board draft just never got removed. What's the June 2012 on the OPEC? Um, that's the last time it was brought to, or a recent time it was brought to the Oh, okay. But it, it wasn't it was made a policy. Okay. It was never made a policy. It was just a draft suggested. Can we also change the, take out the word draft and really? change, it, change June 2012 to August 2018? Yep. That works for everybody. Mm -hmm. Good form of I think you should. I think so. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt the OPEC policy as Carly as, as, as amended. As amended. <laughs> second. Sean, second. Further discussion? All those in favor? How many people are here? Seven. 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 The next policy is debt and capital. And well, they're just there for illustration. I didn't put in anything about the debts uh, issuing. Isn't that there? You think that's enough? I don't know. I think that's. Oh, wait, where are you going with that? Okay, go ahead. I guess I thought we had added that line to try and. The fourth paragraph. You know, put a suggestion in, yeah, to. Uh, when we've been doing our debt issuances the last couple of years, a comment that's been. I think that's already there. Was it? But the bond rating agencies didn't like it because it wasn't specific. I, I think. thought it was added. Yeah. Sorry, which yeah, that, that's <laughs> right. We're, We're just busy next, arguing. Yes. Sorry. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I, no, I, you, I, could, I thought, you could be right. I thought you. I remember I, them being I, really I fussy. I thought I put though. a suggestion and then you had added this. Yeah, you see the yes. sentence in the fourth paragraph the FinCom also encourages issuing debt for the shortest practical term in order to minimize interest costs. 
Because this says draft as of July. 20th. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's, and we it's have not this in the policy. version posted online. Okay. It's not no. posted online. I thought that we had a debt and capital policy out there, and then this is a revision to add this language. Okay. If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. No. You, you, and how much of this right. new language you've got the other one out? I want to say it's I think the just one that two, sentence. Just, yeah, that just sentence. that sentence. That the sentence. income also encourages issuing debt for the shortest practical term in order to minimize interest costs. The last couple of times that we did bond rating, um, the report basically was a great report, but they would highlight the fact that um, we pay off our debt very quickly, but there was nothing in our policy that says that that's how we come to that determination. Like, the, what kind of guidance points us to doing that? Because I think they want to see that we're doing things consistently and that we're using policies to get to it, because that would tell us tell them that we would do that every year if we could. Mm -hmm. Um, or what the guidance is that FinCom's giving us that we're basing our decisions on. And so I don't know if this is enough or strong enough, but right. it was just something we added to try and bulk up what we currently had as a debt and capital policy. Um, I think it's an appropriate line. I, I think the last sentence really should get some discussion. Yeah. When did that come to be? Uh, after the high school? Yes. Which sentence After were you the, talking the about? The two elementary the schools and the high schools. schools. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry, where are you looking at? If, yeah. if debt service, the oh, very last, last sentence in that paragraph, paragraph, which probably ought to be its own paragraph. Well, um, to exceed 0.25% of revenues. I think revenues. offhand, well, it depends. I mean, you can play around with this. You know, we can issue for five years or 20 years and play around with this number. Um, but it's generally around a million dollars if you issue sort of typical debt. Um, you know, where do you want to draw the line? Do you want to just say a dollar figure like the Permanent Building Committee, I think, uses? Is it a million and a half? I'm pretty sure that's what it that is. That sounds correct. So For them to how do you want to determine, or do you want to determine, when something should be issued inside the levy or outside the levy? But this, this we already have this line in here? Yes. And I, I, I roughly calculate it all the time, and we've never been too close. Right, so what does that come? So it's that's it like depends on how long it is, but yeah. Yeah, um, is that what it is? So that's well, debt service. Yeah, mm -hmm. quarter million is debt service. Yeah. So on a hundred million dollar budget, a quarter of a yeah. percent. Maybe yep. What do you buy? Two hundred fifty thousand dollars debt service. I'm trying to think of what's price. been close. The high school litigation might have been more than that. six million over ten years. Got to be more. Oh, we didn't borrow it. We didn't borrow. We borrowed from we borrowed two or three million. million. We were for the settlement one million three fifty five after. No, we must have borrowed more. Really? Yeah, because we used we had eight hundred three thousand left in the right. capital project fund. We used two point two of free cash. Yeah. Um, and then we. Um, and then that leaves about three million. And then there was the MSBA funds that they had us do a temporary right. borrowing for. We were going to borrow three million. Okay. Um, oh, and we end up doing half that about, yeah, yeah I remember now. Yeah. Yeah, that, that gets into very difficult. Math. Did we get the MSBA? Not as much as we hoped at all. They excluded some things, so we have to ask in the number of time for the difference. Yeah. Wow. So the reality here is that we want to make the best decision on a project-by-project -project basis. Yeah, I agree. And it also feels like this last sentence might have come in almost in response to how the schools got funded that one time. No question. Because I'm the, I'm, I'm the one responsible. <laughs> I think this when was I was on FinCom, yeah. my opinion, and it was shared by others, was some of that should have been excluded. That yeah. should have been asked to the voters. Oh, for sure. you know, the high school had to be. There was no question. But the elementary schools had crowded out spending because it was lumping on so much debt inside the levy. Right. Um, and it, it croaked uh, capital spending as much as anything. Mm -hmm. So it, it is definitely an art. It's yeah. hard to really pin this one down. And you know, realistically, you have to at least consider the possibility of what type of excluded debt will and won't be supported by voters, just as an honest statement. It, that's true. Right. You know, Absolutely. A school has a much better chance than a DPW garage for the same dollar yes. cost. So this, this, is a, this is a sense, I think, that you're going to really need to think about. And I don't have a real good answer for you. But maybe it's as simple as saying that it, it's our goal that an individual project doesn't kind of crowd out all other capital activities inside the levy and therefore uh, yeah. exclude, going for an exclusion should be considered. 
something like that. In other words, it's kind of saying, look, if it's if it's going to be problematic, you got to think about it, as opposed to saying you have to. Although it doesn't, so it should be considered. To it me, does. It does say should. I just realized it's a little soft. I think it it's is an appropriate line. Should oh, be considered. I, I read that differently. I said I, I read it as it should be debtor capital that's excluded instead of shall. Uh, I didn't see it as. No, I see what you're saying. Should versus shall. Must. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so maybe we can just clarify the language. <laughs> I think it would also yeah. be a lot simpler, honestly, if you picked a dollar figure so everyone would just understand. Oh, agreed. This percent agree thing is way that. too complex. Right. I was like, what the hell? Over an right. Even if it's a dollar figure well, yeah. of debt agreed. service in a year. Yeah. You know, well, a million dollars of debt service like per year. That would be something. Yeah. Everyone yeah. would know what that means. Yeah. Well, I think that's too high. Mike, maybe, yeah. So, Bob, it sounded like you had a concern that you could just play with the term, right? If it's getting too close, you know, too Could. close to that line. So, would you want to address both an annual, an annual number and a total figure? Well, up as, as think of those as ceilings. I mean, up above, in theory, you've you've encouraged us to borrow as short as possible, whereas previously you didn't. So, that may kind of mute that. I, I do I think it make it readable. The average Joe would. Oh, right. What the hell is that? Exactly. Yeah, I think it's very simple. If it just said project of X dollars or more should be considered as an exclusion. Yeah, when you think about it, Even though that might shift. forget the annual cost, just X dollars. Yeah. So the permanent building committee Ten, looks at things above. A million and a half or two, I can't remember. Ten million, no question, excluded. Well, yeah. Almost always. <laughs> Almost always. Almost always. But that's why it said. Five million? You know, five million over ten years, we we could do inside the levy. Is it a good idea? I'm not sure. This is this is why this is tricky. Although I sort of like it going along similar guidelines that we have with permit building committee, which is I think yeah. two million. And I can't so, remember if it's two or one number. number. No, it was two. Two. It's a million has to sound low, but two yeah. two's, two's so unfortunately sorry. anything's a million. And again, it's just saying it should be considered. Or something else, so. yeah. It's just saying that we're we're giving forth thought to not putting so much within the tax level. Yeah. So I don't think we have to over it too Would you be comfortable if we were spending a million dollars a year on debt service for a project inside the levy? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. How about half a million? You know, we'll What's the keep, number? I'll now? keep saying numbers, and eventually you'll say, oh, yeah, that's one. It's okay. 250? I should go get our uh, debt schedule. Yeah, that's Got to right. my debt. See, I thought we were going to refer to the size of the Well, you can the size do annual. Of the borrowing or the annual yeah, debt service. I, I sort of like it's a, that people can relate to it. I think they're gonna, they can relate to. The cost total of that. Cost. If you start by doing the annual, then I can sort of give you guidance on what the total would be. Uh -huh. you know, five year, ten year debt. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. Because I don't think people <coughs> to the Yeah. Yeah, maybe I will. I'll go get the last town meeting. I'll be right back. in this version. Yeah. It strikes the net available revenue definition. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Um, but maybe because we're not utilizing it because isn't that with the um, MSBA reserve? It, it's, it, I'm thinking about that. The net available revenue is, is net of excluded, I think, and MSBA funding. Maybe it doesn't apply right now because we don't have that. Last Bob, when he gets back, there was a reason to strip strip that. I'm trying to find out. Yeah, it was. There was. I think there was one. When we were calculating net available revenue, I always remember backing out um, the excluded <coughs> portion of the levy, you know, to cover debt service because that's just there to cover debt service, and then um, and the MSBA reserve, which we don't have anymore. But we used to have money set aside that was funding. Do you remember Bobby? Bobby, 
why we struck the net available. Because we don't get MSBA money anymore. Yeah, that's right. And we never will. Yeah. They, do, nice. they do their math differently. That's really what I meant. Let me restate that. The other thing that this probably, I think it's understood to mean, but it really is for the general fund, not for enterprise funds. I thought about that. Um, right now, within the levy, we're paying a million two included. 2.3 million excluded principal in the current year, just to give you guidance, and then 900,000 of total interest. Did you say a million to included? Yeah, principal inside the levy. Okay. Um, energy improvements, you remember performance contracting is probably the highest, that's 400,000 a year, principal and interest. The school's wood end is 170, barrels 140. Uh, modular classrooms 180, TLT litigation 180, West Street 160. So this, you know, aside from the 400,000, which sort of paid for itself, if you will, by energy savings, there's nothing that's 200,000. And then excluded debt. The library is combined a million and a half, high school a million three. So they're clearly. So there's really nothing that's in between. If we peg this to a quarter million dollars, the only thing that would fit into that is the energy savings. Yeah. Or the only thing that wouldn't fit. Into wouldn't that. Fit, you know. Yeah. And that's not actually that's not considered a not like considered a capital project. Yeah, it kind of was. But right, it's multiple, right? Lots of little. We just yeah. financed it ourselves instead of having a vendor do it. But just just to remind you, aside from. Kill them. We don't have a cost. Community center. We don't have a cost. DPW. We don't have a cost. But otherwise, there's um, four million of security, building security. Four million of turf fields. Million of track. Million four field house. Million five. Or million three birch meadow. Actually, two million three two parts. So there's another ten odd million that are out there. <clears throat> Some of that. Could be done as a debt exclusion. I don't know how happy anyone would be. But. So the 250 is too tight. No, I think 500 is too much, and 250 is maybe a little too low, honestly. Because <coughs> you don't want to, you don't want to hamper our ability to borrow for a short period of time, just because your policy. So you know, maybe if you just said half a million, it's okay. So we don't want to give a project. Well, then. You can back into it and just say five-year, ten-year debt is typically what we do. Um, sometimes shorter, two or three years. Yeah, it's, it's really I'm, hard I'm, to say. Yeah, so I mean project level in terms of what we're funding. A $2 million project. Principal. And yeah. I, I think you're talking about things that are $5 million and up just to use a totally ballpark figure. I think performance contracting was at least four million. Do you remember? I think it was just mm -hmm. over four. Several over several things over ten there. years. No, it was more than that. It was twelve years. So, so it was you think right something like two would be too low. I think so. Because if you can't afford it, you want to why do not it. Do it. it. Yeah. You'd mm -hmm. rather borrow for two years oh, yeah. instead of five if you can squeeze it into a capital plan or a debt plan. This so is why, just trying to. Stop people from oh, borrowing twenty-five million dollar projects inside of that. Yeah, of course. But why does it relate to length of debt, whether it's inside the tax levy or outside the tax levy? You wouldn't bother doing outside the tax levy if it was. I'm, so I'm just saying that if if you had an opportunity to, you know, borrow five million dollars for five years mm -hmm. instead of ten years, and it seemed to fit the capital plan, you'd rather do that because mm -hmm. you're paying five year yeah. years of interest. Yeah. But if you have a policy that basically says, well, that five year has to be excluded if you do it that way, then you might force, in theory, someone to borrow 10 years, yeah. mm -hmm. which you don't really want. Just because you wouldn't. Just because of a policy. And you're saying because it's outside the tax levy, you tend to make it longer? No, I just, when it's outside the tax levy, I think you give it six or seven second thoughts. You know, do I really want to ask for it for this thing, whatever it is? 
So would, would you have wanted to ask voters for performance contracting? Would have been really hard to explain. Oh, no. And it's clearly a benefit. It's worked much better than we thought. It's costing 400000 a year. It's saving six or 800000 a year. That's an unusual circumstance normally. You're not going to run into that. So I think you just kind of draw the line high and try to avoid the building projects. That's really what this comes down mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. I agree. And again, it's pretty soft. Should instead be considered. So yeah. I think we've decided on number. <clears throat> really minor nuance that might help with or nitpick that might help with what people are Think about it. what if we said should instead be considered for instead of as or something like that. I kind of had the same read as Mark, but it, like it read more like shall than should to me. Yeah. Um, so if we're saying that you know all this really says is we need to give it some serious consideration mm -hmm. for exclusion before moving forward, maybe we can say it should be considered for. Oh, I now see how you're reading it. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Still yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As long as you want to say exclusion considered should be that. considered. I see. Yeah. Because yeah. I still. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. I think that was a funny. It's like we're doing science at the blackboard. <laughs> things going. I don't see what. <laughs> I don't see the lady. I just see the man. <laughs> Do we have any feel for um, what other successful municipalities have used for guidelines? No, cash. We tend to borrow shorter than most. Mm -hmm. um, much more typically, uh, towns borrow for what the expected average life is or what's allowed. So they can pay as little each year total as possible and don't worry about interest costs. That's, that's even, you know, the well to do community. Tend to do it that way. I don't know why. I don't think they spend a lot of time analyzing it. You know, the policy says in state law you can borrow for 20 years, we borrow for 20 years. Now, there's a certain amount of wisdom for that. For the library we borrowed for 10 years, the library hopefully is going to be useful for 40 years. So we really did penalize taxpayers for the next 10 years much more than taxpayers after that. <coughs> there's always another project, is the way I look at it. Yeah, well, let's pay for something. Right. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And the thing that got me when I started here was all the money the town used to waste on paying interest. It's just completely a waste of money to me. It's not getting anything. That's how I used to live yeah. my living, so yeah. <laughs> on interest. Unless you take the point of view that yes. that's, that's how the project got done is because of the, right. that's the impact per year. Yeah, and if you really could draw a line and say once we do these things, we have nothing else to do for 10 years, then that would carry a little more weight for me. Right. Like, if you do um, kill them, then, you know, knock on wood, we're done with elementary schools and schools in general, hopefully, for at least 10 years, maybe more. <clears throat> but that does always seem to be something that comes along. Well, also, it seems like we're in a period where also, um, for the good or the bad of the interest, we were getting less interest on our reserves because rates were going down and we were, you know, it was a great time to borrow. So now, I don't know about you all, I feel like we're, that's going to be impacted going forward. I mean, this economic yeah, cycle we, is pretty old. It was a great time to borrow long. And yeah. we knew that, but yeah, yeah. we still tried not to. So it'll, it makes sense to consider both the interest rate and the term going forward, especially if it seems like the feds are going to keep up that. I don't know what you've seen in borrowing rates. We, have, we don't know. We haven't borrowed at all. Yeah, I'm sure they've gone up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We've finished refinancing, I'm quite sure. We have nothing that we can refund it or anything. So are we, are we circling around numbers here? Yeah, have you figured out a simple way to yeah. say it? Half million annually and five for the project or something along those lines? Is that where the energy seems to be? Yeah. What would you be your recommendation? I think a total cost of a project is a lot simpler for people to understand. I wouldn't go lower than five offhand. 
doesn't mean you. Well, it it doesn't mean you would never do something excluded below five. It just means you choose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, if you did uh, two or three million dollars of recreation and athletic improvements, you could do that. Doesn't it doesn't say you can't. Right. Uh, right. This is just saying, look, slow down there, pal. You're doing a five million dollar whatever. Mm -hmm. You better do it this way. You better do it this way unless you had a good reason. I like five. What if we tried some words like this? Exclusion from the tax levy should always be considered for projects over five. I like that. Thank mm -hmm. you. That's nice and yeah. clear. I'm, I'm feeling like this is kind of muddled. Yeah, and it, that says under five, you may still want to consider it, but if it's five plus, you, you're saying you, sh you really have to. You don't necessarily have to do it that way, but you have to consider it. Let me read it back. Exclusion from the tax levy should always be considered for capital projects over five million. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> no more so wishy washy. I'm going to get rid of that whole <laughs> yeah. thing. That would yeah. be great. That was giving me a headache. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the definition's down there, and I was like, okay, now I don't even know what that is. <laughs> and will we take all that away if it's down the bottom of the net available revenue? Yeah, the last sentence. So that right, you don't need to calculate it anymore. <laughs> That's right. Pull exactly. my calculator. I gotta look it up. I think that this was out. the other thing we thought about. Is that it's it's not a number that we typically use. So it's kind of well, I might, but no one else would. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> Stands think, right now. I think the um, last paragraph, the first sentence, can be struck. Which? The most, most recent, most recent set. set. We don't really need that anymore. Do you need the last sentence? Uh, no. You really yeah. don't. Oh, right. Need yeah. the last paragraph. That's all about all. talking about the next yeah. That whole paragraph, right? Yeah. 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 Just take the whole thing, all right? By the charter of the capital. Improvement program must be a minimum of five years. I don't really know if you need to put it in policy. It's in the charter. Do what you want. Yeah. If it's in the charter, I tend to say I don't like having information to places yeah, that changes one and then you're yeah. out of sync. I really like the second sentence in terms of it yeah. kind of being reviewed. So I'm not sure it's terrible to kind of say that we're expecting to review a five-year plan at least twice a year. It, there's nothing terrible about it. it is, I just wanted to point out it is in the charter as a minimum of five years, and we tend, tend to want to do ten. Most communities do five. I think ten is much better. And ha is this exactly how it reads in the charter? Probably not. I mean, if you wanted to simplify it, we could just say something like the capital improvement plan program as defined in the charter will be presented at least twice, blah, 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 blah. Mm, I don't know about that. It's not really defining what it is. It just says you have to do it every year. do a minimum of five years, but doesn't really okay. say what it is. That's fair. You could just um, say the capital improvement program will be presented at least twice a year, and so on. But you know, the other, nothing wrong with uh, most of that first sentence, other than the five years part. So your concern is just that the, the charter already says it. Yeah, I'm I'm not concerned. I'm just pointing out that it's redundant. Yeah. So there's no harm in that. I'm actually inclined to just leave it exactly as it is. Yeah, that's I'm fine. Okay with it. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. I don't feel that strong. I just generally don't like redundancy. Yeah, it just makes clear what the expectation is. It's a five-year plan we're going to see at least twice a year. Well, if someone wants to change the charter and make it less, then you can point at this and say, no, you can't. Right. <laughs> right. We want to see five years, regardless of the charter. Yeah. <laughs> Throw that in. Regardless of the charter. <laughs> you know. This is just for information. Yeah. What about this treasurer? Refunding. This is a new. This is a new paragraph. Yeah, that was something I think the rating agencies wanted. So is that a change from the current policy? Uh, the one that's posted is dated out. December '06. Is yeah. that the current policy? Um, <laughs> no, we voted this. <laughs> mm, no, I don't think you did. It's never got voted. I remember. Except for change it. 
Oh, no, 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 this is the Denton County. No, no, we're talking about the Denton County. I think it is. I think it is December 06. So that, that's the other thing the ratings, rating agencies, for some reason, asked for. I don't know why. It's yesterday's news for one thing. Yeah. We make recommendations, and I think that was one yeah. thing. Kind of like this, kind of close. Hmm. Maybe we seventy-five thousand. Maybe seven hundred twenty-five. I don't know. Maybe that number was. Maybe we. No, that's what that they. Yeah, I yeah. think that's what they asked for. There's no harm in it. It's it's not it's not applicable anymore, anyways. We don't have anything that we can do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kathy Martin. Oh, I come up with a name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. No, I know Kathy Martin. Former FinCon member, we were discussing at 7 30. Yeah. She's watching the low, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on debt and capital? So, did they have to vote on it? Yep. Yeah, so I move to approve the revised debt and capital policy as discussed, taking on the word draft and changing the date to August 2018. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Cash reserves should be good. We to discuss FinCon reserves. Get the next one. Um, that's the 150000 yeah. that the, the group has discussed whether that's adequate oh, okay. in an annual budget process. It's been the same level for at least 15 years. I think at some point it needs to be adjusted. I know that we decided not to, but I think that was partially because we had the override taking yeah. place and we didn't want to, frankly, bring up any extraneous issues. Right. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. Uh, I tell you, at the end of the year, it does get a little tricky. Um, there's always the op opportunity to have the select board and FinCom sit jointly and do a transfer that's large, assuming there's a surplus somewhere. Um, Did we do that? Um, it happened. No. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you, 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 did sick, it, you, you, you did it. You, you gave me vertigo. Turns out it wasn't <laughs> necessary, but we signed it. Yeah. We signed it. Again, just for background, FinCom gets a very good reserves so that we don't have to call town meeting if all of a sudden so a question whether that number that hasn't changed for many 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 years yeah. should be increased. So I, like I think the fire department overtime and yeah. something else that should be at the more at the end of the year or because if you think about a budget you know most things you're going to have funds for for the whole year except maybe the 12th month let's right. say but if it's something that no one had planned on, you might have no funds at all. So occasionally, and I, I really don't remember an example, we've asked FinCom in July for something. I don't know if you remember. The fire station, something. harness, something. Yeah, something. Generator. Generator. Okay. I don't remember. Something with the fire station. And I know John and I have talked about some things this year as to whether or not we wait to a November town meeting or actually go to you. Um, and that's still way in the discussion phase. So. So it's supposed to be point. unanticipated right. and kind of a quasi-emergency, I guess. Right. Say. So, so not so big that someone could look at it that way, frankly. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. And it just rolls back to free cash. And 150000 just did. Mm -hmm. end of the year. Mm -hmm. Right. And the past practice has been if income uses money during the year to replenish it at the town meeting, bring it back up to 150. So it's brought back up in November and April if needed. And that's the FinCom practice could be to always bump the FinCom reserves at April town meeting to a higher number because that's the emergency period at the end of the year. You never want to have to come out call for a town meeting in June because yeah. you needed another hundred thousand. If for some reason you couldn't find it, but I I would have. And what's a tape request increase? The request you just just pulled you, into the budget. You just tell me, and I just do it. There's no policy. It's just I put in a line item, 150,000. If you want 200,000 or 250, I just do that. 
Right, but then town meeting has to approve. Oh, right. absolutely. Right. Well, as part of the well, budget, part of the so it's easily budget. been missed entirely. And it would just be built into the budget. Try and slide yeah. it in, but I'm, right. I don't know if it took No, it, it's a line all by itself. It gets voted on yeah. all by itself. So, oh, so yeah, yeah. Asked but I would just put it in and have the budget. Yeah. So if you said 200000 as opposed to the 150, that's what we'd ask for. Town meeting could say no. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there might be some number where the town meeting would say no, but I think it's near 150. Yeah, I don't know that it needs to go up unbelievably. Yeah. But I'm not really maybe 250. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm like saying. That might make sense. Okay. Does it make sense to peg it to revenue? 0.25% of NAR. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hear what, you, I hear what everybody was saying about. I hear what everybody was saying about. Um, you know, it's easier to digest a number than mm -hmm. than the basis points on NAR, right? I, I get that. Yeah. Um, but what I also heard was, you know, it goes up and down over time, and it probably, you know, the trend line is probably up. You know, if you just kind of did a correlation over time, right? Like. Although it's been 150 for how long? No, no, sorry, the, 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 the demand sure. for it, yeah. as opposed oh, yeah. to, you know, yeah. what's reserved at the beginning of the year in the budget. So, um, you know, just a thought, but I totally hear what folks were saying before about sort of clarity of a, of a fixed number. Yeah, the most urgent thing I can think of that's not year-end is a capital project. You just bid it out, you put 300000 and it comes in 315000 so you can't do it. But you come to FinCom and ask, so how much more you know, spread do you want to put in your ability Continual capital project. 150 is not bad. You shouldn't miss a capital project by that much most of the time. Sometimes we get wacky results, though, usually mm -hmm. in our favor. Yeah. Other than that, uh, it's really something that happens that you didn't expect. Like there was a storm and something got damaged or whatever. Usually it's some facilities. Right, because a lot of it comes down to at what point would town meeting members say, I want to be convened yeah, to discuss this? That's true. Mm. And so I, I think it's something, yeah. you know, definitely less than, I mean, more than 500 for sure, <laughs> I think. Is that a control? Yeah. yeah. That town meeting oh, says, yeah. you know what, I oh, wish yeah. I was consulted. Mm -hmm. I think 250. So we've come close a few times and. We've definitely replenished during the year. Yeah, right. So you could do 250 and not replenish until April if you really had to, just as a matter of practice. There hasn't been that many requests over the years. Except What's the greatest yeah. request that there's been? Uh, 400,000, 300,000 by the Board of Assessors a few years ago that had to do the joint meeting. They missed some uh, personal property or some property valuations. And we had to take it out of health insurance. Oh. 300 something. Was I here? Um, I don't remember. You might, you might not have been <laughs> well, it's funny because I could see it being a facilities kind of project. That would be much more typical. Assessors was a little unexpected. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That was a few assessors ago. Yeah. Oh, so so it was so a few boards ago. Victor was here when I got here. Yeah, something blows up. You've got to take care of it. Right and, this, and this blew up because the DOR mandated that we do a certain amount of inspections by a certain date so we couldn't wait. It had to be done in fiscal year end in order to keep the work going over the summer. So it was definitely a slip up. I'm not getting around that. But otherwise, you're right. It's something that breaks. Something you know, you had a capital item, Let's and see. next year you need it right now. So what? Did, so oh, so you're talking about okay. I was going to say we didn't have 150. So you said help out of health insurance. Had to go. Yeah, had to transfer surplus from health insurance, which we had, or benefits. I can't remember. And you're able to do that? You have to convene a meeting of the selectmen and FinCom. Oh, okay. There are very strict speak, rules I would think. Yeah. of when you can do that. Going from um, one it pretty one. much has to be a fiscal year end. You don't have a time to go to a town meeting. Because mm -hmm. otherwise you should have gone to a town meeting, even a special town meeting. Mm -hmm. And a certain percent of the line item you can use up to the maximum. I think it's 2% of the line or something like that. So 2% of 15 million benefits. It's, it's an emergency. It's the only time Reading's ever done it. And then last year, or recently, you did it a second time for like 25000 or some small amount. Okay. If I don't hear differently from you, I'll just plan on 250 in the next year's budget. That's easy. Can you vote on it? Or? 
Um, if you want, you can vote on it. No harm in that, then I can say that's why. Blame them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think if there's been a demonstrated need to increase it. Um, and if, if not, if, if well, that's going to be perceived as taking You've away talked from about it in financial services. forums, but certainly right. not broader than that. Right. So, yeah, it's going to be a noticeable chunk. 200 is less noticeable, honestly. It doesn't seem like a big deal. I think the, the concern is that as capital items get more and more expensive, yeah. I mean, if we're we wait until it's not up, enough, yeah. we're going to be run yeah. Right. Yeah, running into this. It doesn't right. seem to me like you can sneeze. Yeah, yeah. So yeah the, the real nice. emergency would be water sewer. And we'd probably have to call a special town meeting, honestly. Right. We're and not going to not repair it. We're going to repair it and then later ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Hey, we needed this much. But both those uh, funds have really good reserves, like four or five million each. So. Mm -hmm. I'll do 200 if you don't say anything different. No, I don't care if you want to. You, you, you may as well vote. Make a motion to fold 200,000 into uh, income reserves into next year's budget. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Next one, you want to really discuss whether you want to do it in November or April, and that'll help solve how much discussion you need. Right. Although, I also want to have different discussion and get your thoughts because I'm sure you guys didn't think about that. But it appears to me what we're going to see happen in the next few years with that override that just went through is our free cash going to grow, which is a good thing. It might be an opportunity that relates to when you were trying to build in, um, yeah. build in longevity. Yeah. And are there some things we should be looking to wrap into the budget that would be one-time kind of cost? Do you see where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's com we're not gonna, complicated. Yeah, we're not going to likely be able to hire to the rate our right. the budget that was the override budget Although, around. you know, schools have done a pretty good job, as I understand it. Uh, police has done a good job. Fire has not been able to. So it'll vary. So with it, we don't want to make it look like the need wasn't there because right. the need is there. It's a timing issue. So I think we want to be looking for one-time kind of opportunities of putting those kind of dollars in the budget. And part of me thinks some of that might security kind of stuff. I think yeah. we're quite behind on a lot of security spending. I think we've really got to put some focused energy of looking into what kind of security dollars we should be putting in now. So yeah. results of that sort of discussion that I think, I don't want to see it grow and then it look like, why did we need this override? Because mm -hmm. We know we did, but that's that's part of putting together an override. You're putting it into last a certain time period. You're going to have more money up front than you will later. <clears throat> but the discussion you had, I think it was in the winter, might have been last summer, it was to put your minimum, which I think is five percent, into the stabilization fund. And no, that was that matches what our minimum is, four or five percent, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then to have free cash be whatever it is. But you're actually asking another question, which is should we set up some secondary pocket of money, whether it's earmarked or not, or do we just keep track of it um, you know, for extra capital? Like a capital but certainly this year, there will be money in the budget that's not spent. There's no question. Mm -hmm. um, there's a chunk of that going to be in benefits, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, as I just looked at the first month's actually health insurance. It's a little too early for me to say, but it's, um, it's definitely going to be a surplus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in probably April town meeting, November is probably a little too soon. There might be a chunk of money where you can say, let's put this into capital, in, in building security or whatever, whatever it is. Um, 
as I say, we're, we're a little behind in our capital planning. We haven't done any since the override. And the override just added 5% more, um, you know, 5% of 4 million, 200,000. We gave it to the permanent building committee in the first year, but not in the out years. Um, so there's definitely some extra capital funding available. That's over and above what you're suggesting, which is there will be slack in this year's budget, no question, and that's more or less one time. So there, there will be an opportunity for one-time capital. I, again, I think that Or even if it's not capital, whether yep. it's a time for OPEP. Say, so you know yep. what, we've got right. some, I mean, especially I, I would think sort of building security is probably the highest priority. The question is, we've identified four million. We've also identified it's really hard to divide that other than two and a half and one and a half. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do one school. That probably would go over too long. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of be it has to be a big chunk, which means you have to borrow. It's big enough numbers that you have to borrow. And again, that's just not a discussion we've sort of hashed through yeah. at the staff level. Because I just don't want to look like we're surprised after. Yeah. I think this is probably a pretty good topic for the financial forum. By then, we should have a much better capital plan. And John will know his um, situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The schools have discussed doing this space needs. Generations yeah. Yeah. Um, there also are categories like our CASA that Correct. didn't require funding in year one, well, right, but mean. probably definitely require funding in, in out years. But that's yeah. off, that's add the operational. I'm thinking more things uh, yeah. to fill, fill that wedge. Right, but yeah. uh, I think I would certainly want to discuss should we kind of throw some one-time money, extra money into OPEP when we know that we're facing into some operating issues. And I would, I would want to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Basically, how do we make the override last? Don't spend it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but not have people saying exactly what you said. That's a, yeah. that's right. a great Let's point. And be strategic about yes, it. Exactly. Like we have a plan. Right. Because, because we understand it hasn't happened. happened. That's right. That's fast. And we didn't scientifically build it in, but we want this to cover our operating 10 plus years from now <clears throat> with salary, you know, with increases in salaries and so on and so forth that won't be as significant as well, I, the salary. I, don't, I think just a reminder of the discussion, uh, the, the override that was chosen, no one said it's going to last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Just to be fair, mm -hmm. maybe it will. Would security be um, wrapped up in a accommodated cost or facilities? Would it be sh something that would be shared? I understand shared? the legislature has three million in the bond bill, so. Oh, okay. you tell me. <laughs> I know That's, that was really good news. Though. Well, it's good news know, that it might happen in the next ten years. <laughs> right, but it makes you realize at least they think. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it could either be part of the 5% capital or something in addition to the 5% capital or brought to the voters. There's only so many ways you can do it. And I think that we'd be hard pressed to do more than 5% capital for very long because schools in town are going to grow into the operating budget within a year or two. Yeah. Just because we couldn't hire anyone in the, everyone right. in the first year, right. it's going to happen. Some communities have versions of stabilization funds. I think that's kind of unnecessary. Capital, public safety, they have all kinds of names. Mm -hmm. and that gets to be a little much to me. Mm -hmm. so the reason you have a stabilization fund is, is as you said, it's to remove the optics that you've flown in cash that's free to be used at any time right, and just so put it somewhere the term else. Free cash. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like you should declare a dividend to the taxpayers and give it back. Yeah, and, and let me know you have a meeting now for September 26th, so obviously as you think of ideas you want to talk about you know, financial form planning and be one of them, uh, just let me know. Well, we're putting out this discussion about stabilization fund for 
um, time thing. Uh, well, you can. Um, I, I think personally, you'd be well served to have this discussion with the elected boards, honestly, because uh, it does sort of involve them indirectly. Mm -hmm. So should we add that? So I think if you discuss it at the financial forum with an eye on April Town meeting, that feels a little okay. more inclusive. Mm -hmm. They may not care. I don't know. I think it would be helpful to. Um, you mentioned you've looked at some other towns. Well, that's cities. that's the thing is I can bring you in some stuff we did from economic development to catch a much better sense and flavor of where we are relative to our peers. Yeah, I think that'd be great to because it's stuff. actually it, it's the one area we did not stack up well financially. Our, our reserves. I was really surprised, including towns that you know you'd look and say, well, we're better off than they are financially. Well. They've got a $13 million stabilization fund and five free cash. How'd they do that? So, yeah, well, maybe they had one time on it. I, I really don't know. Okay. Is that kind of information public? You know, yeah. DOR. Yeah, DOR. Has right. You know, uh, DOR the DOR data exactly. is not perfect because it showed us as having no stabilization fund at all when we did our work and we. Uh, we had a million and a half. So you take all their data with a little grain of salt, but you know, as a, as a big number over 25 communities, it's it's helpful. Chair, when you get a free cash number, mm -hmm. you then take that number and you add what we have in stabilization and any other stuff, and then you say, okay, this is kind of the total. Yeah, that's what I normally put on the PowerPoint did. slide. Yeah. Give you an idea of what free cash is and then what stabilization is and then the overall percentage of reserves, yeah. Good. I think last I knew you were above 9%. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be worse than that. No, I wouldn't think so. Because we didn't use any last time. Did we? We didn't use much. Well, to balance the budget, put aside from that now. Other than the 1.2, I don't think we asked for it in November and we didn't use it right. in April. So. Could have been. I, I lost track. Oh, I'm no, no. <laughs> that was, yeah. But generally, it's been growing, um, except for the TLT spend. It's been growing. Mm -hmm. Did the attorney general's office ever reply to Bill? On, on the wording of Oh, not that I know of, so not that he's told me. I don't know. That's a good question. I assume we know our answer. Tax bills went out. I wasn't resisting. <laughs> All right, minutes from April 11th. Make a motion to approve the as written. Second. The, um, the date, I think, is off the year. Should be 2018. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, it's, it's that way on the other one as well. <laughs> on the next one, too? Yep. Further discussion? All this is on the first set of minutes. On the, yeah, this yeah. is mm -hmm. the uh, April 11th, 2018 set of minutes. Um, all those in favor? Seven Except after C, right? Oh, okay, he, he's the opposite of the rule. Yeah. <laughs> Not the opposite, but it's kind of how it's so, yeah, right. I think that's right. I always used to do it wrong. Uh, I think I need a second. Did you say? I'll say. Second. For discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero.
Any other business that anyone would like to bring up this evening? Welcome to the new people. Thanks. Glad to have you. Uh, we often talked about putting together a new member book club. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I think I have one from like nine years ago, but I think there's nothing in there that's really still. Okay. But the FinCom reserve is 150,000. That's true. We should have some kind of glossary or, or something of you know, commonly used I can, I can tell you what it used to have. Introduction. Current Finance Committee information. That means like your addresses and names and liaisons. Mission statement and FinCom policies. Let me see where your mission, your mission statement is about half a page. And there's also guiding principles. Um, that was section one. Section two, Reading Home Rule Charter. This is before things were online. Section three, Reading General Bylaws. Section four, DOR, DLS, Finance Forum Handbook. Section five, RMLD Agreement. All that's mm -hmm. online except the RMLD Agreement. I'm not sure if that's online. I don't think so. Yeah. So you're, look, you're re re looking this is, at This is July 2009. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I'm a planner. I didn't even have that with you. Because right? I knew they were going to ask. <laughs> I have it set up. That's really funny. Oh, I'm sorry. The mission and statement and guiding principles is two pages. So it sounds like we have one here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you tell me what you want in it, and I will tell you that some of it at least is online. But what it's else? So much of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Selectmen have had the same discussion. They want sort of a, I don't know, onboarding manual. Mm. And all the stuff it's, is really good idea. It, it should it happen, but but the reality is, the learning is all Google is your friend. Job training. Yeah. Well, there's that too. Um, it's probably an exercise to keep it updated. It's well right. learned. Yeah, yeah, it's it's much easier. You know, 15 years ago, you couldn't go to the town's website and look stuff up. Now you just. I think it would just be in a, um It would be great to have kind of a commonly used terms to the extent that coming on. You, you, have, you learn a bit of a foreign language almost. Yeah. Um, although maybe you're, you're already familiar with it. Um, but I certainly, there's a, for me, there was a learning curve when I started. So. Yeah, for those of you that have been to the different seminars, I never went to one. Um, everyone that's gone has told me they're really good, mm -hmm. especially for newer members to learn term terminology and to talk to other towns. So. Is that in the spring or when? when did I really do don't that? remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not coming, not coming to mind. You pay dues every year, so you're, you know, you're members of the Finance Committee Association of Massachusetts. Um, you know, if you want, we can sort of sketch together a, an updated packet, and I just pretty much rely on what they do and what they have, and uh, bring you an idea in uh, September or later. Because it, it is a good idea, and it shouldn't just be for FinCom members. It should really just be available. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. it's general enough and someone's really interested, yeah. it'd be great for town meeting members as yeah. it relates to the budget discussion. <clears throat> yeah, I even I even wrote up a budget process outline once, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's useful or not. Mm -hmm. Just to, just so people understand, there's a process and there's right. all these spreadsheets. But if you're not a spreadsheet person, you really need the you English. You said you already wrote something. Else? Yeah, I did it years ago, and I don't know if it's good or bad, but I just thought as another tool. So it weren't distributed to us. You know, you start with revenues, then you have accommodated costs, the whole thing. Yeah, no, I think that's good. Yeah. I, I think as a new town meeting member or any town meeting member, it's probably not bad. Yeah. There was, right, a, there I was think it's really smart to start on that really high level. There was a group of town meeting members at some point budget? looking at an intro for, for new town okay. meeting members that might be able to use that content. Let's see if I have that there. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. a peer community benchmark. There is a book that Peter has that you need to get him. The, the big fat red book, which is like all the financial policies. Maybe it's from DOR. I don't remember where it's from. Yeah, I have that. What is it? You get it too. What is it? The little red book. I mean, it's not the little red book. <laughs> it's short, I'm writing down big fat. Oh, that, um, the mask. Oh, how about the bat phone? Maybe it is. Let's go with the car. There's a red book. Yeah. So I, I, I got it's it. It's DOR. I think it's DOR. I gave it to Peter. It's a few years old now, but 
Are we so have all the laws from the US having, government okay. in it? I was thinking of one that had like debt issuance guide. Yeah, yeah. Twice. All that's going to be in there. Well, policies, but yeah, that's worth it. We usually get a couple every year. I'll make sure if we see a new set, we we'll should save one for you. Put that in the nuclear suitcase. Yeah, I think mine is green. No. Well, you, if I knew you got this kind of stuff, I'd go for you. Yours should be black. Yours should be red. Yeah. <laughs> for September 26th, we have financial forum planning. Yeah. Anything else jump into mind for anybody as an agenda item for that? Try to bring in the budget process. And the idea of some kind of a FinCom book book. At least get started. I think I'm out. So I thought we would get from the, the association. And yeah. Again, I haven't been to one of those meetings, but I've heard from different FinCom members over the years. They're really good. I don't know if this would be appropriate for the financial forum, um, but in light of the fact that the override passed, some kind of, um, I, and I know that I believe you've already done this, Bob, together with Dr. Doherty, but like a thank you to the community plus um, a mention of opportunities for senior tax relief and what they are, or directing people where to go. And it doesn't have to be a long piece of the presentation, but just. Yeah. Well, it'll be too late for this year in October, yeah. but yeah, they're doing yeah. it right now. It's yeah. August 1st. Yeah. Oh, and I've read conflicting versions of what the House passed. I don't know if you know, for tax relief, senior tax relief. I don't. The Senate was going to pick it up. Yeah. We heard from one of our reps that it was modeled after Reading. Our assessor says it absolutely is not modeled after Reading. Okay. And he's going to oppose it. Okay. Right. So. Okay. It was a good idea, but I think they may have used Waylands, uh, oh. which is not appropriate for they most communities. They might have used what? Waylands. Waylands. Waylands oh. It's, it's it so technical and stuff, but yeah. Reddings was simple. Wakefields is using a slimmed down version of Reddings, which mm -hmm. doesn't give the, what do they call town council, doesn't give them any flexibility. They do the circuit breaker. Whatever it is, yeah. They don't do double or half. Mm -hmm. They do the number, mm -hmm. that's it. But it makes it simple to figure out if they qualify if they got the circuit breaker. I think even that there, there, that there are these kinds of tax relief available, including like the volunteering well, of services it, and that kind of thing. You know, that's another thing that we were thinking about doing for the budget process is having probably Victor, our, our assessor, come mm -hmm. in and give an overview of all the different, uh, I guess I'll say tax relief opportunities. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot. Right. But there was... Uh, you know, a call from some in the community a year ago to follow up senior tax relief with, well, what about the 30-year-old couple with kids right. that are really right. scrapped, right. scrapping right. to get by? Right. And the answer is there's no, there's nothing legal that we know of. Um, you know, whereas for seniors, there was. There's a reason there's part of the law that we could use. Um, but I think just to publicize what we have, we could do a better job, for sure. That would be probably most appropriate as part of the human elder services presentation, I think, in the budget. Okay. To have okay. them presented because it's mostly mm -hmm. designed at their audience. And Victor's been over to the senior center many times. Great. You recently did a presentation over there. Yeah, right. so right. anyone right. listening, right great. now, August, is when you need to apply. Yeah. Just go upstairs to town hall and see our assessors. It's right. good asset. I heard the one meeting I missed in the in the spring before the override, great job. Yeah, he did a really solid job, and um, I don't remember the numbers, but um, a substantial savings was had by a good chunk of people and passed along to the taxpayers a relatively small mm -hmm. cost. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we've we've heard from a number of people in the community that it really mattered. So unfortunately, that's a good thing to hear in a pet to hear about. Really yeah, but those are really good testimonials. Yeah, I mean, the f it's really surprising to me that other communities haven't tried this, but as soon as we talked about it, all, all the legislators lit up and said, yeah. Because every, almost every community 
he's facing the same issue. Mm -hmm. Prop two and a half. Takes been in my house a long time. Of course, they're like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, taxes go up, incomes don't go up, especially for retired seniors. Uh, the house is their only asset in some cases. So, you know, it's either what we did or reverse mortgage. Uh, if you have any other September uh, 26th items, just shoot me a quick email. And I'll ask the schools if there's anything they, uh, they want to add. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? See you in uh, five or six weeks.